Hey everybody, it's Craig Victor here, and in this video, we're going to do a review for the Nikon 105mm f1.4 ED lens. So I've used this lens extensively over the last four or five months on portrait shoots. So in this video, I'm going to take you behind the scenes of some of these portrait shoots, and I'm going to show you some images from this lens. Now, so make sure you stick around to the end of this video. So I'm going to talk about some drawbacks to this lens as well. I'm going to take you onto the computer, and we're going to look at some raw images. I'll give you my thoughts on the sharpness of this lens on the color rendition, on the contrast, as well as the chromatic aberration. And you can see here the colors are amazing on this lens. It really does a great job of capturing the colors in the scene, whether you use automatic white balance or whether you set it to a certain temperature. So for example, if I'm shooting with strobes, I'll set it to 5500 Kelvin and then I'll adjust in post. But the colors always come out just really vibrant, as well as the contrast in this image. Now the sharpness, that's a little bit harder to tackle. I'll talk a little bit more about that at the end of the video. But as far as chromatic aberration, compared to say the Nikon 85 f 1.4 G, it's a lot better than that lens. So as far as the lenses I've used over the past four or five years, I'd say this is really one of the better lenses compared to say Canon L series lenses. I've used the 100 millimeter macro. I've used the 135 L series lens. I've used the 70 to 200 Canon. And really, as far as the Nikon lenses go, I would say they're equally as sharp, if not sharper, and better color rendition. Now, I've also used the Sigma Art Series, and those are very comparable as well. Really, the Sigma Art Series with the Nikon 105. So if you're just trying to place it where it fits in a category, it's very high up there as far as sharpness, color rendition, as far as contrast. And I think you can kind of see that from the images in this video. But in this next part, I kind of want to talk about what is kind of a drawback for this lens other than the size and weight, which is manageable over time. All right, so here we are in Capture One looking at the raw images from the first part of this video. Now, if you recall, I mentioned that there's a bit of a drawback with this lens, in my opinion, although you can work around it. Now, I've shot with the 85mm f1.4 on the Nikon as well, and I found like I nailed focus a lot more often. So with the 105, it's a little harder to focus at f1.4, so I suggest using a tripod. This was at f1.4, but throughout the shoot, I decided to move it up to say 2 or 2.8 or f4 to get varying degrees of depth of field. Now, if I zoom in, you can see it's a very shallow depth of field at f1.4, which is normal. But if you don't have a tripod and you don't have your focus point right on someone's eye, you could see that the depth of field is very shallow. So one thing I would recommend if using this lens is to use a tripod and really make sure that you have that focus point on someone's eye and maybe take two or three shots just to make sure that you capture the image that you want. Now, a majority of the images that you saw in the video were at f1.4. Let me just show you a couple of different ones from this shoot that were at a higher aperture, just so you can see how that looks. So here's an image shot at 2.8. Now, some people will say, well, why buy an f1.4 lens if you're gonna shoot it at 2.8? If you want a little more depth of field, you're gonna get a bit of a sharper image and more depth of field if you go up a couple of stops from the minimum aperture. So you can shoot this to 2.8 and you still got a pretty good background there. I've also got a shot coming up here, I think that's at f4, which is a pretty good background as well. So again, that one here you're looking at, that is at 2.8. Let's look at another image, the raw image from the video. Now this is at f4. Now again, still at f4, it's still a pretty blurry background as long as your background is far enough away. So this looks good at 1.4, but I would caution you to use a tripod or really good technique if shooting at 1.4. If you want a little more depth of field and a little more sharpness, 2.8 to f4 is a great range on this lens as well. Hey, it's Greg Vector here again. If you enjoyed this video, give me a thumbs up. And if you have any comments or questions about this lens, you can post them down below in the comments section. Let me know what you think, if you've had any experiences with this lens, how you find the sharpness, the color rendition, and so on. Now also, if you're not already a subscriber, just hit that subscribe button and make sure you hit that bell notification and then you'll be notified of future updates. I come up with new videos every week, so if you don't wanna miss those, hit subscribe and hit that bell notification. And before you go, don't forget to give me a thumbs up and feel free to share this video on the web. Just look below this video, click on share and you can freely share this on Facebook groups, photography groups, and so on. All right, thanks again for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one.